Welcome to Trojan Talk. I'm your host, Aaron Taylor. They be talking about some research that could help people, possibly in tornado recovery in this part of the country uh, and around the country, but our part of the country most definitely. Uh, my guest today is the Koch Professor of Economics here at Troy University, uh, Dan Sutter. Thanks for joining me today. Thank you. And uh, as I mentioned, tornado recovery, uh, a big part of the state of Alabama, especially this year and in past years, uh, some of the deadliest tornadoes we've seen in a long time came through this state. And you, working through the Johnson Center of Political Economy here at Troy University, have been doing research on tornadoes and recovery and written some books about it. Tell us a little about how you got involved with doing research on tornado recovery. Well, I started working on tornadoes about a, a decade ago when I was at the University of Oklahoma, first interested on the, the specific issue of uh, tornado shelters. I knew there, there were tornado shelters out there that you could have built into your house. And uh, I was living in Oklahoma. I had always been very afraid of tornadoes growing up. And I, I thought that I should you know, maybe study, uh, study the, you know, the what type of investment uh, a tornado shelter would be. And so as an economist, we have the tools that would allow us to try and quantify such okay. risk trade-offs. And so mm -hmm. I, I started doing that. And from that, it just went from one project to another. I was at teaching at the University of Oklahoma at the time, and they have a, a very strong meteorology program. Some of the uh, tornado, a lot of the tornado uh, storm chasers that you see on TV are all based uh, out of the University of Oklahoma and a lot of the, the leading experts in the world on, on uh, tornadoes. And once I started talking to them, it turned out that there were a whole bunch of societies or economic impact uh, questions that nobody had really been asking. And so uh, I, I started... So you started looking into that sort yeah, of yes. stuff. And so, of course, you went from, from Oklahoma, where known for tornadoes, and then you moved to, to Alabama to a place where one of the deadliest tornadoes in U.S. history took place in about the time that you moved to Alabama. Right. So obviously, I would think that that would have become an interest for you as well in looking into something that happened right in your back door, in your backyard. Yes, yeah, so definitely I, I had accepted the job here at, at Troy University uh, before the, the outbreak last April, and, and so when that occurred, it certainly naturally sprung to mind that this was something I would probably want to take a look at and, and study it in more detail. And uh, it, it's certainly one of the things that, that shocked us, my, my co-author on, on this uh, research and, and myself, was just how deadly last year's tornadoes were. Obviously, everybody in the media was was shocked mm -hmm. as well. We'd really come to expect that, you know, come to think that tornadoes couldn't kill that many people anymore. Like maybe you know, in the 1940s or mm -hmm. 1930s, you know, uh, that that was that could have happened then, but not now with all the new technology and radars and warnings and, and so forth. And so, uh, as researchers. The events of last spring really surprised and shocked and, shocked and saddened us. Uh, that that you know, if, if you're a researcher and you've looked at issues regarding casualties and then you know, mass casualty events happen in your in your area of expertise, you feel like, well, if if, if I could have been a better researcher or gotten my message out better, maybe somehow we could have helped uh, alleviate that. Well, let's talk about that, your research. What do you hope that your research can accomplish uh, in looking at all of this? What do you hope that the, the ultimate goal if someone actually picks up this and looks at it will be able to do? Well, I think you know, the research uh, to date on tornadoes have had a number of really important in, uh, impacts. One, is we looked at uh, the effectiveness of Doppler radar that the Weather Service uh, installed back in the 1990s, and it showed that it, it reduced tornado fatalities and, and injuries by about 35 to 40 percent. Uh, and so that's been very important in going forward because right now the Weather Service is uh, upgrading their radars doing what's called dual polarization of the radars that actually allow a meteorologist to see uh, the storms with much greater detail than they could before. And, and you know, the Weather Service has pointed to the fact that there were benefits, that there were quantifiable benefits uh, to the nation in terms of reduced casualties from the, the initial installation of the Doppler radar in justifying the, the uh, dual polarization upgrades. Now, uh, we, we've done work that uh, has documented a false alarm effect for tornado warnings. And, and that's important because if there was no false alarm effect, then uh, the Weather Service would seem to be advised to warn very aggressively for everything. But even you know, about, uh, we, we show that too many warnings lead, leads to a, fall, a, a cry wolf scenario. To a little uh, apathy in yeah, it. So. Yes. And so we were able to document that. And that was actually uh, an important accomplishment in the uh, hazards research because nobody had been able to, to document uh, such an effect before. 
And uh, you know, one of the other things that our uh, research shows is that you know, it doesn't seem like really long lead times on tornado warnings are, are all that important. That that the b most that the benefits all seem to be uh, realized at about a 15 minute warning. Yes. Now that's important going forward because the technology is going to exist to possibly uh, go ahead and extend warning times, perhaps out to an hour mm -hmm. in, in the next decade. But you know, what, what our research has shown is actually by making the warnings far more precise geographically, uh, there's a lot more benefit to society and we're probably going to be able to reduce casualties more uh, by making warnings more precise than trying to extend out the, the lead time. Well, uh, we're running out of time here, but uh, obviously I know there's a lot that people can learn. You've got a new book coming out here uh, very soon and uh, with some more of your research and hopefully uh, some folks will be able to get a chance to check that out and maybe this research will help uh, save some more lives. I want to thank you for joining me here today. Well, thank you for having me on. <laughs>